Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. I had a client, his name was Jim, and he was 67 years old. He had retired, his whole life was golf, and he had back pain that was so bad he could not play, and the doctor told him, forget it, you're never gonna play golf again. So you can imagine, he became very depressed, his social structure kind of fell apart because his life was playing golf. And so he was referred to me by someone and I just did some very simple evaluations, physical evaluations, and I said, Jim, I said, here are seven to 10 things I want you to do four days a week, 15 minutes, no more. Don't even do more. And in three months, he was back playing golf. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to Golf Smarter for members only, Catherine. Well, thanks for having me back. <laughs> I'm so glad you you agreed to come back on another week. And, you know, if anybody was listening last week, you know exactly what's going on. Um, and it, what you were talking about is we, when we finished, beyond everything we were talking about in between, um, when you are playing a round of golf, you're walking four to five miles, and that, that can take a lot of uh, toll on your body and stress. But what you didn't remember to mention in that is most likely it, when you're walking four to five miles, you're carrying a golf bag, which has got to put a lot of stress on your spine, or mm -hmm. you're pulling a cart, which is going to be stressing your shoulder, or you're pushing a cart, right? That is going to also, especially if you have any hills to deal with, you're put, that's going to put strain on your back, your lower back, whatnot. Unless, of course, you are at a country club and you have a little motorized thing and all you're doing is carrying a remote control. That's a whole or even better, Or even better, you're on a Segway. Ah, uh, that one course, uh, what's the course in, in Phoenix? The only one, right? In Scottsdale? Kirlin in Scottsdale. Kirlin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did it once, and it was outrageously fun. Yeah. I think still they're the only ones that do that. They are. They are. But you're, but you're right. I mean, the stress, the stress that it puts on your body, you know, when we, when we train our teachers, we have we have we have certified teachers in fifteen countries now, Fred. Wow! And you are the yep. hardest working woman in show business, in golf business. <laughs> I, I, you amaze me at how many different things you have going at any given moment. Oh well, you know what? And this one one of the challenges and the gifts of what I do is that I never feel like I'm working, so I'm always working. Wow! Uh, and your husband probably doesn't say that. He's like, "Would you stop <laughs> working already?" <laughs> Turn the computer off, honey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. I'm not working. Really, I'm not. <laughs> and you know my husband. My husband's a good, great guy. He's awesome. That's why I could say that. <laughs> I know. Um, but if you think, if you if you think about this, oh, I was going to say. So you know, in, in, our, in our teacher training program, one of the things that we focus a lot on is what is the reason why? Why does a golfer need to condition for golf? Okay, you want to go out there and bang some balls. Why do you, why do you need to why do you need to even focus on getting your body prepared for the golf swing? Well, think about this statistic. Okay, so we talked about this in in the last session, but the golf swing happens in under a two second period of time. Mm -hmm. You're creating club head speed of eighty to ninety miles an hour. You are creating that speed from a static position so you don't get a running start. What other sport other than baseball do you not get a running start to create velocity? Hmm. Okay. Okay. And you're walking four to five miles in a round. And if you were, you know, I, I spend half my year in Vancouver, B.C., and I spend half my year in Scottsdale, Arizona. When I'm in Vancouver and I play golf, you know, the first, and I, you know, I'm fairly fit, okay, but the first couple rounds where I'm pulling or pushing the, 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 the cart, not the, push you know cart. what I mean, the pull yeah. cart, yeah, the push cart, right, um, I'm huffing and puffing a little bit because it's very hilly. When I'm in Arizona, it's primarily, it's more flat. Right. So, you know, and fortunately, you know, I try to stay out of the bunkers, so I don't want to say that I'm crawling in and out of bunkers. I do my best to stay out of those. But, but the reality is, is that, you know, you have to, you, 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 your body has to adjust to undulations in the terrain. And so if you think of all of those things, 
to say that you don't need to do something to prepare your body for a round is naive. Yeah. I asked you know? a friend of mine recently, I said, do you do any uh, exercise in the morning before you play or at all? And he goes, yeah, I walk to the car. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, but a lot of really? people do that. Yeah. Right. right. You do walk to the car. So this, this, this kind of takes our original discussion and expands it even further, which is, you know, how do you start? How do you begin to craft a program? I think it can be a bit overwhelming. You know, what do you, what do you want to work on? Um, um, and so I always say to my students, my clients, let's, let's pick the top three things that you want to work on that are e- either and or golf or just fitness, mm-hmm. right? Because we're, we're addressing fitness through golf. So pick three things that you want to focus on. Okay, so let's say, for example, Fred, I know you, and I know that you struggled a little bit with getting more turn. Okay, so maybe you want to get more turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've had an issue where you wanted to strengthen your core. So, okay, let's say we're going to work on turn, and we're going to work on strengthening your core. Um, You know, you work very hard, so maybe what you want to do is you want to create a program or, 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 or one of those three things is... Post round, how do you, how do you, because you like to play as much as you can, so right, so how do you um, craft a program that will, you know, create more restorative energy in the body? So you pick like the top three things. And one, maybe, and maybe it's, maybe it's you want to generate more distance. Well, how do you generate more distance, you know? You need to work on flexibility in the hip flexors and strengthen the glutes. So you see what I'm saying with, you know, you think about, let's pick three things that you want to focus on. Right, right. Then you say, then you say to yourself, very, very honestly, how much time do I have to devote to this? Exactly. And if I'm working with someone and they say, I'm gung ho, I'm going to do two hours, five days a week. I say, no, you're not. (laughs) Yes. And that, yeah, it's the true. Not. It's like it's like saying you're going to do it, and even doing it for the first week may happen. But it's it's discipline on that stuff is really hard with everything. It, it's is, hard. it is hard pulling so, at us. So my whole thing is let's set you up for success. Yeah. Let's do everything we can to set you up for success. And again, if someone says, you know what? To be honest with you, Catherine, I work a sixty-hour-a-week job. I play on the weekends, I'm married, I've got three kids, they're in soccer, they're in, you know, whatever, they're in, they're, they're in golf programs, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, well, there's no way that that person plays golf, too. The way you just described right. was 60 hours and three kids and, the, and they're all playing sports. There's no way that guy gets to play golf, unless it's the middle it's of the night. True. <laughs> <laughs> when he's sneaking out to go play, to go play, like when I was working in Dubai, you know, you can play golf at night. Yeah, right. Right. All night golf. <laughs> All night golf, right. So anyway, but you know, so what I'm saying is just being very realistic about your lifestyle. Right. And, and so once again, let's just say it's 15 minutes, four days a week. That's all I can do. And you know what? That's enough. Mm-hmm. That's enough. And that's a great start. So, so just to recap, you know, let's start writing this down for your listeners to write this down. Pick the top three goals that are both golf and fitness or slash health related. Second thing, be realistic around um, the time that you have to devote to this series of exercises that you're going to do. Absolutely. Third thing is find a buddy, someone that you have to be accountable to. Wow. That's really smart. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be someone and, you're doing your stretching with or something. It's like, yeah, occasionally my wife and I will do that 10 to 15 minutes in the morning together. But if you have like, go- like a golf partner is what you're suggesting, that maybe they do it, at, you know, and you, you're competing. All of a sudden you're competing. And that, that is a, that's the incentive right there to make it happen. The, re- the, re- the research around having a buddy and um, people that surround you, that support you in your journey, the benefits of that are tremendous, especially wow. the especially the buddy piece. 
So somebody that I have to just say, I have to digress for a moment because this is really kind of a funny story around buddies. And you and I digress? Come on, never happened. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so that's because we have so much to talk about, Fred. Yeah, true. It's a problem we <laughs> but, only talk but, once every six months. <laughs> I know that's right. But but one of the things, is, um, so there was a um, a group of guys that lived in that were living in Florida. This, they just even, they just called me uh, last year, and they had my. Uh, DVDs and actually for the holidays they they bought so they're, they're foursome that they play with they play in every week it's like the men's group okay and so they bought each other my DVDs for the holidays for the you know holiday gift and so what they decided to do was they got together every week before they went out to play in their league and they did part of the DVD maybe it's just the warm up of the DVD together as a group and then they went out and they played okay yeah now their friends kept saying to them what are you guys doing you're hitting the ball further like i've never seen you hit the ball so well so on and so on and so and so they, they were like oh, you know nothing you know it's none of your business and so so they said to me that they, they it was like i was kind of like their secret weapon <laughs> And they wouldn't tell anybody what they were doing, but that, but that, that, that's, that's what they were, that's what they were doing. And they credited, well, they don't, shouldn't credit me. I just created the content. I should credit them for the ones that made the commitment to do it. But they would just, they would meet together at somebody's house close to the course 15 minutes before they would go out for their, for the men's league. And they started playing better. And, but, but here's the thing. If they didn't have that camaraderie, the chances of them getting together every week to do that, would not be as great. I completely agree with that. That makes so much sense. And, you know, and especially if you're playing with guys on a regular basis uh, or partners on a regular basis, yeah, you give each other a hard time and you razz each other and, you, you know, there's the, the jabbing and kidding that goes on. But there's also a supportive element um, that has to be there or you wouldn't continue to do it, right? Sure, for sure. So let's recap again. Three to five things that you want to focus on, right? Yep. Being realistic about your time. Finding a buddy that you will be accountable to. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, even just those three, those three things can get you started. And the other thing is to realize, this is the fourth thing, is that, you know, the slightest, slightest bit of effort that you put into changing your body does reap great benefits. Yep. Um, and I have seen people, I write about this in my first book, is I had a client, his name was Jim, and he came to me, um, he was 67 years old, um, he had retired, he, his whole life was golf, and he was, um, had back pain that was so bad, he could not play, and the doctor told him, forget it, You'll, you're never going to play golf again. So you can imagine, he became very depressed. Um, his social structure kind of fell apart because that his life was playing golf. And so he was referred to me by someone and I just did some very simple evaluations on him, physical evaluations. And I said, I said, Jim, I said, here are seven, you know, seven to 10 things I want you to do four days a week, 15 minutes, no more. Don't even do more. And in three months he was back playing golf. Oh, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> well, I don't know if they lived happily ever after. Actually, I think they got divorced. But anyway, he was still a good golfer. <laughs> that was cold. I'm teasing. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, a buddy that but could be. He was really good. <laughs> a buddy that could be accountable and supportive. Um, I, okay, let me, let me uh, grill you for um, one or two pre round stretches. Um, at the course, and then uh, I'm going to get you for some post-round stretches too, and then we'll move on. And I want to—I want to know about. Uh, you told me something. And I want to hear more about this online yoga teacher training thing that you're doing, because okay. I know there's okay. a lot of fitness people that are people who are into fitness that listen to this show. I think they'd find yes. this absolutely fascinating. But let's do. Teach me a couple of things. Give me some drills. Okay. Well, this, 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 this first exercise you would not do on the practice tee. It's something that you would do in the locker room, okay, because you do have to get down on the ground for it. But it's one of my favorite stretches to do for golf to warm you up, okay? 
So I call it a dynamic alligator stretch. So imagine if you are um, you're li- lying on your right side, okay, and you're bringing your knees up to a 90-degree angle to your body, and you're on your right shoulder, and then you're bringing your left hand so that your left hand and right hand are touching, okay? Does that make sense? So your right ear is on the floor or supported by a towel. Your head might be supported by a towel. So you're like in the shape of an L. Make sense, Fred? I'm figuring. I'm trying to figure this out. Try me one more time. Okay, so you're lying down. You're lying down on the right side of your body. Okay, hang on. I just might as well do it. Forget it. Uh, okay. Luckily, I have the kind okay. of microphone that I can do this. Okay. I'm lying down okay. on the right side of my you're, body. Hi, Lulu. You're lying on the right side of your body. You're up on your right shoulder. Yep. Okay. You are then going to bring your knees up to a 90 degree angle to your torso. Got it. Just want, just want you to know that uh, being on the right shoulder is not a great thing because I was just recently diagnosed with degenerative arthritis in my right shoulder. Isn't that great? Okay, so what you can, what you can do is put a towel under there okay. or just shift slightly back. Okay. Shift slightly back so you're not directly on the shoulder. You're more on the scapula. Much, is that better? Much better, yep. Okay, there you go. Okay, so you can be slightly back. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your knees are a 90 degree, your femur is a 90 degree angle to your torso. Your knee is at a 90 degree angle, okay? Yep. So what you do is you bring your left hand and your right hand together so your palms are touching. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you inhale and you roll all the way open, bringing your left shoulder blade down to the floor, but your knees stay together. And they stay on the floor? Yeah. The knees stay together and they stay on the floor. Ah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, you, might, you might not go all the way. I mean, chances oh, good. are for most Now you people, tell me. <laughs> no, for most people, your left shoulder blade will not come anywhere near the floor. Yeah. Yep, this hurts. On the first repetition. Now, here's the thing. So you've inhaled and you've opened. So you're stretching the lumbar, the thoracic spine. And then as you exhale, you bring the palms back together. (sighs) Okay. Okay. So you inhale, roll open. Exhale, bring the hands back together. Okay. Nice. You can do that 20 times. That's great. And what's amazing is that, again, talking about how the body changes, you will see how your range of motion from repetition 1 to repetition 20 to 25 changes. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that because you're preparing your body for the golf swing, and we talked about all those why conditions for golf scenarios, you don't want to do static stretching when you're preparing yourself for the explosive movement of the golf swing, which is why what I'm showing you is dynamic. Right. Right? You're inhaling and exhaling. You're inhaling and you're exhaling. You're constantly moving. You want your neuromuscular system, you want the brain to say, okay, we're going to need to be moving and creating rotation. Can I get off the floor now? Uh, I think you can. Okay. Yeah, sure. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, good. No, I like that one a lot. I'm gonna. I'm definitely. Ouch. I'm definitely gonna want to do that. I okay. Like, okay. Good. That's one. That's one. That's one of my favorites. Sure, that makes total sense, especially for me, because you said I. You know, I have that. That I'm limited. Turn, and that's gonna probably help because I can feel where it's tight when I do that. Yeah, and so what you're doing is you're creating that stretch of the torso over the solid foundation of the lower body, which is why it's critical that the knees stay together. And you could even put a towel between your knees and kind of squeeze the towel, which activates the adductors, the inner thigh muscles, which is very good for helping you um, be able to internally and externally rotate the hips. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. I like that. Okay. Good one. Thank you. Yeah. So that's a good one. That's a good one. That's just one to start. So that's kind of that's pre-round, okay? Yeah. And you know, on krflexfit.com, we have more tips than you would ever, you know, you can than you can imagine. We have lots of great content around how to warm up. Um, Wait a minute. This is the and, first time we're talking about krflexfit.com. Is this oh, I'm different? Sorry? Yeah. Is this the is this different than yoga for golfers? Yes, it is. Oh well, hey. Talk about burying the lead. <laughs> What's krflexfit.com? krflexfit.com. Okay. 
FlexFit.com. As in Catherine is, Roberts. As in Catherine Roberts. I'm telling you, you're such a good promoter. Yeah. <laughs> K-R Flex Fit. I'm typing. Dot com. Okay. I'm there. Okay. KRFlexFit.com is a site that we have that is directed more around the Swing Flaws and Fitness Fixes book that I wrote with Hank Haney. Mm-hmm. So there's work with the ball, with like the yeah. stability ball, whereas yoga for golfers is more um, more around the the yoga specific correlation to golf. This is around more of the fitness specific related relations to golf. But I always do interject yoga philosophies in terms of I talk about breathing, and in this um, in this website I talk about foot function and proprioception and balance and um, which is always a, a theme that's in all of my teaching. But this is, a, this is a website and an initiative that's around the Roberts Flex Fit Method, which is what we talked about in the last call, which is right. about how to create synergy um, in the body. Mm. Synergy and symmetry are the two words, okay, in, in the body. Okay. Awesome. So you can see that it's, you can see that it's different from yoga for golfers in terms of content is slightly different. Yeah. Oh, and there's a lot of great, you just, just scanning over the front page, there's a lot of different things to attract your attention, except Joe Torre, I don't really care, but um, <laughs> you guys. He's the most incredible man you could ever meet. Really? Really? Joe Torre's an incredible, incredible human being. That's fabulous. Yeah, well, he's hard not to admire. He's incredible. I, I can't, can't tell you how blessed I feel to have worked with him as wow. his yoga teacher. Wow. Where was he when he started and where, how did you get him, where did you get him to? Oh, you mean from a physical standpoint? Yeah. Yeah, you know what, it's just, um, he just, I mean, he was, he's an extremely strong man. Very, very fit. Well, he was a professional baseball player. I know, no, just, you know, from a flexibility and, you know, and, and, um, just kind of breathing standpoint, you know, just Mm -hmm. like really what I do with, um, with all the baseball players I work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy to think that this is my, now going to be my ninth year in Major League Baseball. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I had about 11. Bud Black, Black with the Padres, um, who I work for, you know, Bud Black. Yeah, sure. Um, that said to me last year, Catherine, two more years and you almost be uh, available to, you almost be, um, you can almost get a pension. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're self-employed, babe. <laughs> Not there. Yeah, he's, he's lovely too. I've, I've, I've been blessed to work with incredible baseball players. I mean, Jake, P- Jake Peavy, Trevor Hoffman, Greg Maddox, wow. uh, Adrian Gonzalez, Manny Ramirez. Andre Ethier, I, just, the list just goes on. I just well, I it's can't a, tell you. It's also because uh, there's two things. One, you're you're phenomenal at getting your stuff out there and promoting, as we've talked about. But you're, it's also valuable content. I mean, it's worthwhile content. That's why I'm mm-hmm. saying if I had an opportunity to do 10 minutes or 15 minutes with Catherine Roberts every morning, I would do it. I'm telling you. Well, thanks, Fred. No question in my mind. I would definitely do it. All right. Um, all right. So now we talked about the, the the one stretch, the pre-round. Now that's not that's before you leave for the golf course when you're lying on the floor like that, right? Yeah, that would be something that we would do. That you would do. You could do it in the locker room. You okay. know, um, one of the if you want to talk about something to do on the practice tee. Yeah, please, because I don't have a locker room. What what is a, lo- a locker room? Yeah, I don't. That doesn't exist where I go. I go to the pro shop. I go to the first tee. You know, okay. or I go to the driving shop, range or driving okay. range, you know, okay. but yeah. Okay. So driving range. So this is a stretch that I like, I, I like a lot too. And it's actually a sequence of stretches. Good. It's about three things that we're going to link together. Okay. Okay. So you've done that. You've done that stretch that we just talked about at your house before you left for the golf course. Mm-hmm. You get to the golf course. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your golf club and you're going to hold it in your right hand. And you're going to step your right leg back into a really long lunge. Mm-hmm. The right leg okay. goes back or left leg goes back? Right so, leg goes back. The club is in your right hand. Okay. I'm there. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to give me a little 
tilts in the in the lumbar spine, so like a little arch in the back. And then I want you to squeeze your glutes on your right side and press your right hip forward. Uh, so what we're doing is we're stretching the hip flexors. And what, and what also, does the, the value of holding the club up in the right hand, what does that add to this? No, this is, no, no, no. I'm just saying you can use it for balance. Oh, oh, I see. So I can, I'm not holding so it straight up in the, the air. Club. I'm just holding it to use yes. it as a, a tripod type of thing. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry. Yes. The club, the club is on the ground. Yeah. It's helping you for balance. So you're holding the grip of the club, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can even turn it upside down, whatever. So what you're doing is, again, we're warming up dynamically, meaning we're preparing the body for the explosive movement of the golf swing. So mm-hmm. we're going to inhale, push the hips back, exhale, push the hips forward, inhale, back, exhale, forward. Oh, do yeah, that's the in and the out right there. Right, right. okay. So that's working the hip flexors. Now we're going to take it a next step further. I'm going to have you hold the club in your right hand. But you have to do that on, on both sides, right? You do, then you switch and do it on the left side. I'm going to add another one before we do the left oh, side. Oh, wow. Okay. So doing the tripod thing. I'm going to make you work, Fred. Come I'm on, working. I'm go. working. I'm working. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now the club is in your right hand. Yep. Still in, your, still in your right hand. Bring your right leg up and put your right ankle on the outside of your left knee. Mm-hmm. And now bend your left knee and sit back like you're sitting in a chair. One of my and favorites. Then start, and then start to bring your sternum, your chest, down towards your shin, right? Mm -hmm. So then you inhale, you lift up a little bit, you exhale, you sink down. You inhale, you lift up a little bit, you exhale, you sink down. You can do that five or six times. Awesome. I'm pretty good with my balance, but doing the the rocking motion here, it's a good thing to have the club holding myself up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's no, no worries. We're not really working on, you know, yeah, no worries. It's great. So, okay, so then you've done that. So now you're going to step your, we're still on the left, left we're, the club is still on the right hand, okay? Yep. So now step your left leg back. Left leg back. And the, step your, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad. Step your right leg back, back, roll back onto your left heel. Right. Shift your chest so that your chest intersects your left knee as you stretch the hamstring. So you're going to uh, inhale, right, and then exhale lower, bringing your chest to the knee. It's a hamstring stretch. Yes, inhale, lift is. up. But your hamstring stretching on the left leg. You've been working. Yes, the, that's yeah. correct. Okay. That's correct. This is a sequence. These are three exercises that you can do as a sequence, and then you switch sides. So what we've got, to recap, we've got a hip flexor stretch on the right side by lunging the right leg back. Uh-huh. That's the front of the hip. Right. We bring the right leg on the outside of the left knee, the right ankle on the outside of the left knee. And when you're doing a lunge, I I love this tip. When you're doing a lunge, you've got to make sure your knee is above your foot, right? Not behind it, not not past your, or above your ankle. No, directly above the ankle. Ankle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Left knee. Then you take the right ankle and you put it on the outside of the left knee, Mm -hmm. right? And the club is still in your right hand. Mm -hmm. And so you inhale, lift up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, sit back like you're sitting in the chair and bring your chest down to your shin. Inhale, lift up just a little bit, not all the way up to standing, just a, just a skosh, right? Mm-hmm. And then exhale, come down. You uh, can do that, you know, five to ten times. I love the okay? word skosh. Then, I know. <laughs> then step the right leg back mm-hmm. and then roll onto the left heel. Turn your torso over the left knee. Inhale, lift and lengthen the upper body, and then exhale, fold over the left leg. Notice I've never said the word bounce once. Right. It's not about, it's not inhale, exhale, in, it's not like up, down, up, down, up, down. It's very subtle. It's a very subtle lengthening and a very subtle folding, but it's dynamic. It's constantly moving. You're preparing your body for the golf swing. And, and I've seen so many guys when they go out, if they do any stretching before they go to the golf course, they'll take their club in both hands, right? And they'll stick, um, they'll lay it across left to right, and they'll just twist their body, go, uh, 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 mm-hmm. uh, uh, and twist to the right, twist to the left. Okay, I'm ready. I'm done. <laughs> with, 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 with their legs straight, yeah. creating, creating compression in their lumbar spine. It's, yeah. You know, I have to say something. I was just working with an osteopath today. Um, os- yeah, an osteopath today. And I've worked with lots of great PTs and 
I mean, tremendous people who have taught me so much, which I'm so grateful to. Uh, namaste to them, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and one of the things we were talking about is one of the greatest forces that you can put on your spine is flexion and rotation at the same time. Hmm. Well, guess what that is? Golf swing. Exactly. Flexion, forward bending, rotation. The That's two the golf major swing. Stre- yeah. the, most, the most stress you can put on your spine is flexion and rotation. If we're not doing things, exercises just like we've talked about in, you know, this, se- in this session um, to offset the, the, the forces that are placed on the golf swing, we're not going to be playing golf that long. And you know what? I can speak for myself. I want to be playing golf into my hundreds. I love the game. I love it. To me, when I'm out on the golf course and the sun is setting and there's big trees and there's long shadows or if I'm in Arizona and the saguaro cactuses are like glistening in the sun, they look like they're glowing. What's so beautiful? Why would you not want to stay in the game? Right. I feel the same way. I, mm-hmm. really, I love, yeah, I love being out there. I love being out mm-hmm. there. Even when I like, after if I'm doing a lot of interviews and I'm doing like the podcast, I'm like, oh, I don't need golf for a little while. But I go out to the golf course and went, oh yeah, this is why I do this. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, I love this. Yeah. It's like a big exhale. Yeah, you know? exactly. With all the stresses going on in life, golf is, as we talk about all the time, golf is in the moment. You, are, you mm-hmm. have to be in the moment to be playing golf, so nothing else matters out there. You absolutely. Know? And it, absolutely. it really helps. You know, I, absolutely. I have to say something. I just played in a um, charity golf tournament uh, a week and a half ago. I know it's for our local um, hospital up here. And I, I won the ladies' long drive. And I, I, I drove the ball 238 yards. Nice. Yeah, and you know what was so funny? It was like I, I, I knew I wanted to win the ladies' long drive because, as you know, Fred, I'm a very competitive woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I was, I was, I, I, you know, I got, I got the brochure beforehand. I understood who were the sponsors were, but immediately I went to like, which, which hole is the ladies' long drive? I'm going to win that thing. And I and I had this in my mind that I was gonna that I was gonna win this, okay? And I and I knew which hole it was, and we were it was hole number one, and we were coming around nine, and I was like I'm I was so mentally focused and prepared, but what you just talked about was like I just said I have to be fully present, and I stood on the first I stood on that tee box, and I said. And I saw where the where the the peg was, right where somebody had already had the long drive, mm-hmm. and I said, "I'm going to drive it way past her." Mm-hmm. And and I visualized it. I saw my ball. I saw the trajectory. I saw it landing. I saw it rolling. And I stood on the tee box, and that's what happened. Wow! Yay! Now, now, trust me. That doesn't happen all the time because no, sometimes, I'm standing, sometimes I'm sometimes uh, I'm on a greenside bunker shot and I am shaking with the gift because <laughs> I don't know if it's going to go three feet or thirty yards. So I don't want the listeners to think that I'm like so great, you know. <laughs> no, it's one of those but moments you want to tell that story, right? And it's also it ties back to what you were talking about, which is just being fully present, like like just like settling in, being focused, grounding down. Okay. I'm here. I can focus for the next 15 seconds. You know? I mean, the thing about golf that's so interesting is that you actually you get a break between shots. Yeah. Uh, you're right. You know, and that you get that time. But <laughs> that's such a conversation that we have all the time about how do you stay focused, how do you get back into focus and things like that. But mm-hmm. you have physically, you have time to recover before you have to take your next shot. You do physically have time to recover, and this is a conversation for us to have on another day and another call about the mental focus, because I coach a lot of golfers, and it's like, you know, you, you can't stay laser-like focused for four and a half hours. No. You'd be exhausted. No. And for but me, four and a half minutes you, is a big deal. Yeah. What do you do between shots? 
what mm-hmm. do you, you know? Do you lift your head? Are you taking in the scenery? Are you pulling in, you know, are you, are you pulling in your core? Are you lengthening your spine? Are you breathing in? Are you taking in, you know, taking in the environment, having a fun conversation with your friends, and then you get right back and you get focused? Or are you so angry that you just had a triple bogey that when you go to the next tee box, you're carrying that anger and tension in your body? That doesn't work. Doesn't work. And you're not talking to anybody, and you're mumbling the whole way, and then you get up there and you yeah. swing faster, and you swing yeah. harder, and you have more problems. It doesn't work. It doesn't and work. I, I, I say this all the time with my classes, and I say, I can say this because I've been a golfer since I was 15. Golfers have a tendency to be the largest group of self-loathing athletes out there. <laughs> Yeah. Golfers will golfers have a and I and again I can say I'm not throwing stones. I'm I'm living in a glass house right now, okay? <laughs> well yeah. I'm living in a glass house. And but I can tell you that golfers have a tendency to focus on the negative. I played competitive tennis as a junior. Tennis players don't focus on the negative the way that most golfers do. I, and I'm guilty of this. Well that's because golf you're playing against yourself. With tennis, right. you're, you, have, you, always, you have a very uh, very obvious opponent in most other sports. Golf, you're playing mm-hmm. – two things. Golf, you're playing against yourself, and you can never win. <laughs> That's right. Right? I mean, it's like those two things alone, it's like, well, uh, some people would say, then why do you play? And others would say, that's exactly why I play. Oh, that's beautiful. I wish I could take that's credit beautiful. for it. Um, okay, so now I want to go to uh, the online yoga teacher uh, teacher training. Can we can we just spend a little couple minutes on that? Because I know that we have listeners, and I wouldn't be surprised if Michael Hamill from Canada, who's a regular listener, if he calls you after this, because he is such a fitness freak, and he sends me reports and he sends me videos. I mean, this guy is amazing, um, and he comes down to Arizona a lot. So you'll hear from Michael Hamill. But, um, well, I would love to hear from him. That sounds great. So basically what we've done is we've, um, for the last um, eight years, we've had, or maybe nine years now, we've had a teacher training certification program for yoga for golfers. And it's for, we have, as we said, we have teachers certified in 15 countries now. And, and we have fitness professionals, yoga teachers, PGA, LPGA professionals, um, you know, chiropractors, physicians, all kinds of people that have gone through our program who have become certified through mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, one of the things, Fred, that you and I have talked about this, which is why what you do has always been of such interest to me, other than that you're great, is... Yeah, what um, do I do? Wait, what is it that I do? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no, is, is that we wanted to reach out to the global community uh-huh. e- in a, in, even in a more uh, seamless way. I see. So I took the teacher training program, and it took me 18 months to create this, and I created the program that is now deliverable online. Great. So anyone that's listening anywhere in the world that is interested in becoming a certified yoga for golfers level one teacher can do so online. And so, for example, we just had a we just had a class, and we on, on the same call we had teachers from um, from from Ireland, from Phuket, from Singapore, from Thailand, from Spain, from um, from Canada, from the U.S. All on the same call. And so, wow. even if you can't actually make that call, the calls are recorded, so it can be home study. Nice. And um, it's really, really exciting that we're able to reach out to people in a more global way. So, if anyone's interested in in becoming a certified teacher, um, you know, we are we are happy to hear from you. So, it's really, it's definitely a labor of love, Fred. As I know you feel the, uh, the same way about what you do, and to be able, you know, I just want to say this, to be able to reach people, um, you know, when I get an email from someone that says, I bought one of your DVDs because I didn't want to have any more low back pain when I played golf, and I wanted to hit the ball further, Um, and then six months later, I came down with prostate cancer, and what I learned from you about breathing helped me through my chemotherapy. Oh, that's fabulous. 
you know what, Fred? I just look up at the heavens and say, thank you that I am so blessed to be able to do this kind of work. It's yeah. really, I'm so, I'm so humbled by that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so, it, it's so moments pre- like that. You go, you know, uh, it, <laughs> that's when it's worth it. If you can affect one person in that way, that it helps in that way, then it's all worth it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. How, really how do, lovely. is there, is there a specific URL to learn more about this online teacher training? Yes. It's yoga for F O R. Yeah. Golfers. Oh, plural. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. Yoga for golfers.com. And on there, there's a downloadable application. Um, you can see all the information about how to sign up. Um, and it's, it's just been it's been a really exciting journey, you know. What do, I, what do I click on? Where would I um, on that page? Uh, what you, on would, that you, page? you would you would click on to instructor program. Uh, right there on the top. Oh, okay, I got instructor it. Instructor program, and then you can. There's a PDF application. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right. Make sure everyone and that, do that. And that starts the process. We are redoing both of our websites. They will be up and running in the next two weeks. It will make the whole thing even more seamless. So, all know, right. Um, and when you say two weeks, what? Give me a date, because two weeks doesn't mean um, anything in the podcast world. That's right. I'm sorry. Um, cool. I would say uh, by October 10th. Okay. Okay. Good, because October 11th when you start shooting, so you <laughs> you better get that done. <laughs> well, I, I I'm not doing it myself. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> I have great web people. <laughs> Train with Catherine in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona to become a certified yoga for golfers instructor November 10th through the 13th, 2011. That's, that's right. Feel free. If you, you know, some people, some people are not comfortable with online training. Right. And I understand that. Some people, want, they want the hands-on experience. We're still doing the hands-on experience. The next teacher training is November 10th, 2011. Um, in Scottsdale, Arizona. So if you're someone that says, well, I, I like the idea of online training, but I prefer hands-on, come to Arizona and train with us. Cool. You know, it's so funny because you and I have known each other now for probably about, well, I've been doing this for just over five years, I guess. Um, and we've known each other pretty much from the beginning. I contacted you in the beginning and asked you, to, and you were very, very nice because I know how busy your schedule is and we've we made it worked out. But I just want to let everybody know, Catherine and I have never had a meal together. We, we, we only talk to each other on the phone or on, on, while recording. That's a, that's, a, that's a problem, Fred. We need to have a meal together since my passion is cooking. Oh, well, you know, that time that I was in San Diego to, to shoot this thing, we couldn't even get together for a meal then. We tried. It was like, oh, no, got to go. Oh, we got, oh, I'm so, oh. And both of us had too many directions to go in just for those two days. At least we that's got to. wrong. Fred, that's yeah. just wrong. We need to have a meal together. I mean, to me. We need like, to break bread. We need to break bread. And can I tell you my secret, my secret, secret desire? Uh, yeah, and I won't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody <laughs> except anyone that's on the podcast. Oh, right. I want, I want, I want, I want to be the next Food Network star. Wow. Uh, you know what? Catherine Roberts, I wouldn't doubt if it happened. You, if you amaze me. I have the connection to the Food Network. My goal is I want to be the next Food Network star. My passion is cooking. I love cooking. I when love... do you have time to cook? I just make it. I love it. It's my creative time. I can't, I can't, I can't, I cook every day. See, I suffer from male refrigerator blindness. You know, are you familiar? Are you familiar with mail refrigerator? It's it's a oh yes, it's a I am. Very... My husband opens up the gra- opens up the refrigerator door and says, "Where is the mayo, honey? Uh, on the shelf in front of you?" Oh no no no! Mine. I have a severe case of mail refrigerator blindness. If it's not in Tupperware or a baggie, we have nothing to eat. <laughs> If I'm in charge, and I, you know, I work out of my house, and I'm here by myself, and so if there's no leftovers, I don't eat. It's like, why didn't you eat today? Well, there's nothing to eat. What do you mean there's nothing to eat? I went shopping. I've got all this food in here. It's like, if it's not in a baggie, if it's not in Tupperware, even a piece of plastic, I'm like, 
I don't find anything, and so I ended up having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich again. But it's, Are you it, serious? I, I, Come on, I, you're more creative than that. I'm very creative when I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm editing or I'm taking pictures, something like that. You're very creative. Very. Yeah. Not in the kitchen. No, I, yeah. and my, my family makes fun of me. Once my wife said, I'm on my way home, just make the rice. I had to read the box and I still screwed it up. I made enough rice. <laughs> it was just going to be the four of us eating. I made enough rice for 10 to eat three meals. Okay. Just I was like, a, what know, did you get do? A rice cooker, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Hire a rice cooker. I just don't. <laughs> Mail refrigerator no, blood. Just buy a rice cooker. Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. I don't That's need hilarious. to buy a rice cooker. I've never been allowed or asked to make rice again. And my kids look at me, okay. my, ki- my younger one's great in the kitchen. They look at me like, really, you really can't do this? I'm like, no, I can't do this. I, tr- I read the directions you get home and I still screwed it up. <laughs> okay, so Fred, yes. let's just bring this back to golf. Okay. Go ahead. Breathe. And it's important to know your strengths and your weaknesses. I know. Right? Nice it's important to know that you're not going to cook like anyone on the Food Network. That's not your strength. Your strength is what you do right now. So, thank goodness, namaste, the universe has provided you with people that can take care of you and feed you. So why aren't I on the Golf <laughs> Channel? <laughs> I want to do this on the Golf Channel. You're going to be on the Food Network a lot earlier than I'm going to be on the Golf Channel, I'll tell you that. Well, if you have anybody out there oh, I was on the, ideas... I was on the Golf Channel. Oh, never mind. <laughs> With you. That's right. You were on the Golf Channel. That's right. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Catherine, so good to talk to you. I you too, I, my I, friend. I had so much fun. We have such a blast together. Oh, what a great relationship, it's and it's so safe. <laughs> Too much fun. Yes. Too much fun. Well, it's only safe because I'm not eating your rice. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> In which case, I might have to give myself a Heimlich. Well, next time I get down to Scottsdale, I'll give you enough warning, and hopefully you can make us a meal. That would be awesome. But my, my hunch is you'll be in Vancouver when I get there. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We'll talk. Thanks so much for coming on and, and spending so All much right. time on these two shows. I really appreciate it. Thank you.